Hey, it's Brother Jesse. I've come to you today just to, to visit with you for just a, a few minutes and, and uh, to give you some soul food. From time to time, uh, I'm going to do these videos uh, so that uh, we can kind of track together as a church family. And, um, uh, of course, we're living in rather difficult times. Uh, we're certainly facing some uh, challenges here. Uh, we're, we're not able to get out very much. Uh, some of us can't go to work. Uh, some of us are, uh, you know, having to do uh, things a whole lot differently than we were doing it two weeks ago. So things are changing and changing quickly. But uh, so far, I think we're facing the uh, challenge very well and we're rising to the occasion. And I know God's given us the strength to do that. But I do want to visit with you from time to time and, and just help you to, uh, to have a focus so that we can all kind of have a focus together as a church family. And, and maybe this will help you. You know, my hope is that we don't uh, begin to withdraw from the Lord, that we withdraw from one another. So hopefully with this change that we're going through here where we're having to spend a, a lot more time uh, alone or, or uh, you know, have a lot more time to do things that maybe we weren't do, able to do before, this will be a good time for us to seek the Lord, to get closer to Him, uh, to grow in our Christian life. And so that we just want to help you with that as best we can because I know some of you really miss church. I do too. Uh, Sunday was a very unusual day uh, for me. It was, it was a very... Uh, uh, different and, and uh, I knew something was missing. But anyway, here we are today. I want to talk to you about real life. I'm just going to take a few minutes and talk to you. I'm going to start, this is going to be something that's going to take us several of these uh, visits to work through. And so this will be part one. But I want to talk to you about real life. What is real life? Everybody wants uh, to live a life that's um, uh, satisfying and, you know, fulfilling a life that's rewarding in some way to them. And, of course, we, we have, uh, um, you know, an idea of what life really is that the world gives to us, uh, that we've learned from others that, that, quite frankly, is false. And so we want to talk about what's real, what, what, what is real life. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. And that's what he was talking about was, was given to us real life life and uh, not a false one not one that doesn't uh, really uh, uh, satisfy us one that doesn't fulfill us he wants to give us real life and so how can we find that kind of life well first of all I want to say to you that real life is only going to be found in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ I just believe that it's just that simple I believe you're really going to to find a life that has peace and joy a life that's fulfilling and satisfying, you're only going to find that as you are, are able to discover what God's plan is for your life. Once again, I told you uh, a, a minute ago that, the, that we live in a world that has an idea of what, what life really is, what, what living life at its best uh, really is. And it's a false one generally, or at least they feed uh, some false notions about life. Uh, we, we tend to think that life is about us. We want to think it's about us. We want to we want to make it about what we can get. We want to make it about uh, uh, what others uh, uh, can do for us. We want to be you know the the world teaches us that the best life is one in which people uh, meet our needs and serve us and and uh, so we we mound up all of our possessions and we we try to get popular and and we craft. Uh, an image, and, and we, we, we do all these things that, that we think will satisfy us and, and, and uh, make our life better, and then in the end it doesn't. It winds up being very empty and uh, uh, unsatisfying. So we, we want to we we talk about that. What, what, what do we do to uh, find that real life and, and then to be able to enjoy that real life? A lot of folks are struggling because uh, you know, uh, uh, in this issue and, and aren't really able to enjoy life, I think, first of all, because they're running from God. They're just running from God. Um, they, and, the, and the reason for that is they don't really have a, 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 a right conclusion, if you will, about God. They don't understand 
who God is and what God wants to do uh, in our lives. So because of that because of that misunderstanding, because of the misconceptions they have, they, they run away from God. They don't look to God. They don't seek God. And as a result, they're going to miss out on what, once again, what real life is really all about. Uh, one day I was fishing and, and I took the boat out. I was on the lake and, and I noticed there was a lizard that was in the boat, one of those little small lizards. He's running around in the boat and, and he's just absolutely panicking being in that boat with me and he's running around and running around and he can't wait to get out of that boat to get away from me. And I meant no harm to that lizard, but he jumped out of the boat eventually and I could see him just, the, the lake was really calm and this, this lizard is, he's, he's um, swimming across this lake and him, boy, he's leaving uh, quite a, a wake behind him. And I thought to myself, well, there's some going to eat him quick. Either a bird's going to see him from, from up high or a fish is going to see him from down below, but, but uh, he's history. Something's going to eat him quick. And so as he went out, uh, as, he, as he's swimming out there, of course, uh, he's swimming and swimming and he ain't getting nowhere. And so the next thing I know, he's coming back towards the boat. He realized the boat was the best place to be. I even put the paddle out and the thing crawled up on the paddle. I put him back in the boat and me and him got along just fine after that. But that's the way people are with God. They run away from God thinking that they mean, mean them harm, they, that, that God's going to somehow make their life worse that God's going to be you know some kind of party pooper in their life and and um, and that living you know a life uh, for God is one that's boring and, you know so so a lot of times it's just a matter of a wrong conclusion so a lot of folks struggle uh, with with finding real life and enjoying life and living life at its best because of running from God they need God to be in their life and another reason why people aren't enjoying real life is because they're trying to live it on their own. They're trying to live it within their own abilities and resources. And, and so they're depending upon themselves, upon their, what, their wisdom, their thinking. They're, de they're trying to live life uh, uh, in the flesh, if you will. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, they try and, and they, they, they look for uh, life in all the wrong places. And the result is they wind up still knowing that something's missing. There's, there's this void there, and, then, and they keep trying to fill it up, and, and nothing ever seems to really, really, you know, fill that void. It's still always empty. And, and uh, so I would say to you that there is no life outside of coming to God. There's no life, no real life, no satisfying life. You're not going to live the real life without God. You can survive. You can survive well, even maybe, uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, you know, do the best you can and, and uh, you know, you can might live in a great big house. You know, you see all the time these people uh, that have no reason, really, to be uh, downcast or unhappy. They've got money, you know, they've got everything they need, you know. Uh, but every day we read about these people uh, that have everything seemingly going for them, but... Uh, they're miserable, they're alcoholic, they're drug addicts, they're going from uh, uh, relationship to relationship to relationship, and, and they're never really happy. And, and the reason is because God's not in it. God's not the one that's authoring and finishing their life. So you're not going to find life outside of a life that's surrendered to God. And then, of course, a lot of folks, it's just ignorance, of course, uh, of of God and what God wants to do in their life. And so as a result of that, because they, they walk in this, this ignorance and, this, and, and all these misconceptions and, and all these false ideas about God, they wind up walking in darkness. That's why, why the Bible says they're lost. They're just lost. They're, they, they don't have a real understanding of, of, of what um, um, their life is supposed to be about. And they try to they try to live a life based on a lot of, of false notions. And so, it, it, you know, the destination isn't a good one because they're not following the right road. And so uh, they blame God for their problems and they blame God for issues and hurts and losses. And, and um, you, you know, I've heard all kinds of things people say about God and, uh, and, and why they won't follow Him, why they won't surrender to Him. And unfortunately... Uh, their their reasoning is 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 not correct, and so so 
what I want to do now is finish up by, by helping you to, to, to discover here in this part one of this series on living the real life. I want, to, I want, to, I want you to focus on this truth that God loves you completely. You know, God is perfect. God is perfect in every way. He's, he's infinitely perfect. Everything about Him is perfect. Everything about Him is right and good and true. Everything about God is perfect. And we know God is love. And so His love is perfect. His love is infinite. His love is eternal. His love, everything God is, His love is. And so God loves us. The Bible tells us that over and over again. We don't have to do a Bible study on that. You know God loves you. Or at least you, you have heard that before. But I want you to believe it. I want you to know and understand that to live the real life, you have to understand God loves you. And He wants the best for you. He wants what's, what's good for you. In every way. Perfectly. And there's no reason to run from Him. There's no reason to not to surrender our life to Him, trusting that He loves us. Let me give you some, some verses. And, and write these down, and I want you to meditate on these verses because I think they're, they're going to help you. Real life flows out of our understanding that God loves us. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God, God thinks about us. He thinks about you. He thinks about you. He's thought about you from the beginning uh, uh, of all of this, from the beginning of, of creation, from before creation. God had you in his mind. He, he thought about you. He knew you then. And he wanted a you. And so he created you. And some of us think, well, uh, I've really messed up, and, and if God wanted me, He really got a, He got a mess on His hands. Well, He knew that ahead of time, and still made you. Still, still made things, uh, uh, put everything in place, and worked everything out where there is a you. And so, He knew ahead of time what He was getting into with you, but He still made you. And He's in your life right now because He loves you, just as you are, just like you are. He loves you. In Zephaniah three seventeen. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. And He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I love that. I love that passage. I love that. It is so amazing to think of a God. He's not sitting up there like a judge, sitting you know, behind the, uh, the bar of the court with His uh, you know, black robe on and, and with that gavel in His hand ready to you know, judge me, uh, 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 you know, he's not a stern God, he's not a taskmaster, he's not, uh, uh, you know, he's not any of those things. He, he's a God that, that loves and, and rejoices over us with gladness and sings over us. Wow, God sings over you. He loves you, he rejoices over you. So why would we run from him? Isaiah 62 and 5 says, And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. That verse also talks about how we'll be called Hephzibah and how he would delight in us. That's what that, that name means. He delights in us. He delights in you. He delights in you. As, a, as, a, as that bridegroom rejoices over his bride, he, he rejoices over you. That's God. That's who God is. He's not this, this, this thing that we've made Him. And then a couple of verses I want to I want to share with you. These are th th these are statements that Jesus made. John fifteen and nine says that Jesus said, "As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love." So he, here's what he's saying: As the Father has loved Him. Now, once again, let's just think about this. The Father loves Jesus. And the Father loves Jesus. He's loved Jesus eternally. And that, their relationship, that father-son relationship between the Father God and Jesus, that's a perfect relationship, perfect love. And Jesus says, I love you just like my Father loves me. That's powerful when you think about it. I'm loved by Jesus 
as much as the Father loves him. So he's using that as the, as the, as the model uh, that he uses to love us. So that's amazing when we think about it, that, that he would love us like that. Isn't that amazing? Why would we run from him? Why would we run from him? He's merciful because he loves us. He's good because he loves us. And, and so we need to run to this God and surrender to this God. And another thing Jesus said, as, I, as I'm closing here, John 17, 23, he says, You have loved them even as you have loved me. So we, here we see the Father loves us. The Father loves us. He loves us as much as he loves Jesus. Yeah, he loves you as much as he loved his son, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. God loves us completely, perfectly. He loves us. And so we got to start with this if we're, going to, if we're going to enjoy real life. We need to understand God loves us. And he has a wonderful plan for our lives. He wants to be intimately involved in your life. He wants to be all up in your life. He wants to be with you from the start of your day to the end of your day. God wants to be there. And he wants to be there as your loving heavenly father. He wants to commune with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to get to know Him. He wants you to get to know Him. He uh, wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to, to have a life that is fulfilling. He wants you to have a life of peace and joy. Yeah, real peace, real joy. You don't have to find it in a bottle or in a pill or in this relationship or that relationship. He wants to... He wants to bless your life and make your life a, a good one. He wants you to enjoy the real life. He wants to do that. He wants you to enjoy life at its best. And he, listen, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to make that possible. He sent him to take our place, to die for our sins. You know, there's a lot that, could, that would stand between us and a holy God. He's a loving God, but he is holy. And there's a lot... Uh, 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 that would certainly come between him having a relationship with us or us having a relationship with him. But when Jesus came and he went to that cross, he did that to take our place and to die for all those things that, that keeps this love relationship between us and the Father, to, to keep us from, from having that and rejoin that. He came to restore us to a place where we can walk with a heavenly Father. So today, if you've been running from God, you've been running from Him, you, you just, just for whatever reason, you've not given your heart to, to, to Him, surrendered to Him and His plan, I want to tell you to stop running. Stop right where you're at right now. Turn around. That's what repentance is. It's, it's turning from a life without God to turning to a life with God. And as you turn, move towards Him, and He's going to move towards you. He's going to meet you right there. He'll be right there. You don't have to clean up. You don't have to do anything. Just, just to embrace him. Like that prodigal son when he went back. The father wasn't interested in beating on him or punishing him or berating him. He just wanted to welcome him back into the family. And that's what he did. And that's what our father does for us. So if you've been running, stop. I tell, just tell him that you, you, wanna, you, wanna be, uh, you want him to be in your life. And you don't want anything in your life that keeps this love relationship from, from being everything that, that it could be and should be. And maybe this has just been a reminder for you. Maybe you are a believer. Maybe you've just been, been renewed in your understanding of some things here. And so this is a good time for you to just pause. You know, when this video is over, just give a little time praising the Lord and uh, thanking Him and worshiping Him for being that heavenly Father that loves us so much and and uh, just let him just let him have his way with you surrender to him that's that's the key to, to to living a real life is to surrender to this god that loves us so much and wants to be in our life so would you do that let's pray father in the name of jesus I pray for every person that's listening to this right now, Father. Lord, if they've been running from you, I know you're, you're drawing them right now. You're talking to them. Thank you for that, Lord. 
And you're bringing them to yourself, Lord. And you're doing a work in them right now, Lord. Thank you for that. And Father, there's some of us, we're believers. We've just been reminded of some things that's just caused us to rejoice. I've I've just kind of here.